Good morning and welcome to ELTC's webinar entitled Online Gamified Learning Using Classcraft. I am Dr. Sharmila Devi Krishnan, the moderator for today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, gamification and online learning are constantly expanding into various fields of education, including English language teaching. We are grateful to have with us Andrew Hudson and Madeline Watson from Classcraft itself, based in the US, to share their knowledge and expertise on this topic. For your inf information, this webinar will start with a presentation from our speakers and is followed by the Q&A session from the audience. Well, let me give you a brief introduction on Andrew first. Andrew is a Senior Customer Experience Manager of Classcraft, fondly known as Hatch, well, that's how we call him, who helps learners build a better beginning by cultivating curiosity, designing discoveries, and engineering enthusiasm. Well, Classcraft is full of enthusiasm, though. His goal is to provide fantastic learning adventures for students and generate a gaming environment that will be a positive experience for both kids and their teachers. Hutch was named the 2018 Teacher of the Year for Flagler County Public Schools. He has 16 years of experience teaching science subjects, ranging from grade 7 life science to college level AP physics. Hutch has conducted professional development and written curriculum for the National Math and Science Initiative. He holds a master's degree in physical science education for grade 7 to 12. Next, we have with us Madeline Watson, the head of sales from Classcraft 2. Madeline has spent the last 12 years working closely with educational institutions and spent most of the time partnering with K-12 school districts on their long-term strategic goals. She takes pride on taking the time to understand schools and districts' ongoing needs to provide effective and tailored solutions. She loves working at Classcraft because they are making an impact on children's life. Classcraft is fun, relat relatable, engaging, and well-designed program that promotes collaboration, intrinsic motivation, and a desire for learning amongst all students. Reach out anytime, and she'll be happy to share more details with you. It's a friendly approach. All right, without further ado, let's welcome Hutch and Madeline. Hello, Sharmila. Hi, Hutch. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Madeline. Great. Hello. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. Oh, thank yes. you. All right. Well, that's the truth about both of you. So what is the time in the US right now? Oh, right now. Madeline, you want to cover that one? It's 9 p.m. where we are. We're on the East Coast, but... Okay, all right. It's 9 a.m. in Malaysia right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you to both of you for accepting our invitation to conduct this webinar when it's after office hours for both of you back in the U.S. Oh, it's, it's very exciting. It's our pleasure. Um, I've never had the opportunity to speak to a Malaysians before, and so I'm so excited to do that tonight and share this with you. Oh, so okay. That's thank awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to both of you too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, happy learning from Hutch and Madeline. The floor is yours, Hutch. Oh, I love that happy learning. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to our presentation on gamification. And um, we have a little slideshow to share with you. We're also going to be throwing you right into what we call the deep end of the swimming pool with gamification um, here in just a few moments and just having some fun. So let's go into it a little bit here. Um, let's see. First of all, we would like to hear from you. So in if you're watching us on YouTube right now and you can find the comment section there, then my friend Madeline will be interacting with you throughout this presentation in that comment section. So feel free to ask questions along the way. And uh, she will also be sharing resources uh, concerning what I'm talking about. She might share links to uh, 
helpful websites and videos and so on. And um, so pay attention to those comments section and interact with Madeline there as we go along. And let's get some practice with that interaction right now. So before I just start talking about gamification, I want to know where you are with this topic so I can personalize it for you. So give us a self-assessment on your comfort level with the term gamification. And what I like to do with my students is we do a three, two, one self-assessment. You put a three in the comment section if you are a pro at gamification. You know all there is to know about gamification and you're excited to learn maybe just a little bit more here tonight. You put a two in the comment section if you no gamification. You could pray, probably give us a definition of gamification, but you're excited to learn more. And give us a one in the comment section if you say, whoa, what's gamification? So give us a three if you're a pro, a two if you know, and a one if you say, whoa, slow down and tell me a little bit about gamification. All right. And there's a little bit of a... Um, delay between what we're doing right here live and then when it streams on YouTube. So while we are waiting for your responses in the comment section, I am going to move forward a little bit with our um, with our slide deck here. So when we're talking about games and uh, there's a lot of Oftentimes, there's a lot of negative um, perspectives around games, particularly video games um, in the education realm. And so we have this slide with, um, with, with three very popular video games. They, each of these video games have been around for over 20 years, and um, they are still very popular to this day with students and adults alike. Um, and the reason why these video games are so popular is because engaging in video games can fulfill emotional needs for us. And so that becomes intrinsically motivating to play these games. And we see a few examples here. When we see Minecraft, it's Minecraft, if you're not familiar with what Minecraft is, it's a game where you essentially, the original version of Minecraft allowed uh, the player to have a blank canvas, a blank world to create in. So you have complete control. You can build castles. You can build um, whatever mountains. You can build whatever you want to. We've seen amazing creations uh, from students and, and uh, from all kinds of folks in the world of Minecraft. So it gives complete control and choice. And then Tetris is the game where you have blocks that fall down the screen and you have to line them up so that there are no gaps in the blocks. And this is a great game to show how video games can automatically help you feel the sensation of skill progression because Tetris will get faster on you the longer you can stay in the game. So it automatically adjusts to your level of skill the longer that you play. And then we have World of Warcraft, which is um, a massive multiplayer uh, role-playing game online. And um, human beings, us real human beings, have found meaningful connection and made meaningful relationships within the digital world of World of Warcraft. And so it facilitates for some of us the ability to connect with those who we would never be able to interact with in our normal social circles uh, locally. So control, competency, and connectedness, those three C's of emotional needs um, are fulfilled by games. And let's take a look at our results. Okay, so it seems that we have a pretty even split between ones and twos and no threes at all. And that's great. So let's go into, uh, let's kind of dive into gamification right from the ground up so we can all synchronize there together and then move forward together. All right, so 
We're going to specifically look at how to bring gamification to education tonight or this morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but before we look at how to bring it to gamification, let's just look at what it is and see examples of gamification already happening in our daily lives as adults. So first of all, when we teach a student a new word, a new vocabulary term, what do we do? We help them break the word apart to look at the pieces of the word and then put them together to make sense of this word. And we can do that with gamification. So when we look at gamification, game is right on the front of the word. So it has something to do with games. And then ification is the process of. So gamification is the process of making something game-like. And this can be applied to many, many aspects of our lives. And it has. It has been applied to the many aspects of our lives. So what I'd like you to do now is to do a little, a little check-in with us on that comment section, keep those typing fingers warmed up, and give us as many examples of gamification that you can think of that are outside of the world of education. And while you do that, I'm going to help get your thoughts started. I'm going to share a couple stories of examples of what I'm talking about. Okay, first of all, in a broad sense, if you want to make something game-like or gamify something, then you need to bring the elements of games to that thing. And the elements of games can be pretty much summarized in three words that each start with the letter P. And they are on the screen here. So we see you want to earn points. Earning points allows you to make progress and then you gain powers by making progress. Points, progress, and powers. And this is all done in a playful mindset. Um, and so it's fun while you're doing it. And if you also want to make it even more engaging, then earn your points, make your progress, and gain your powers with peers, with folks of your uh, same age group that you can interact with and become possibly friends with, and it is even more motivating. Okay, so um, here's a story about gamification. Um, in the, and I'm, I'm American, so uh, unfortunately this is an American example, but I'm really excited to hear some Malaysian examples and some other examples from our international friends. So in the, um, in the late 1970s, there was a, um, a worker motivation crisis going on in North America. And the, um, the company American Airlines de uh, developed the first gamified loyalty program to help motivate not only their workers, but to motivate uh, customers to engage with their product to buy more plane tickets and to buy more uh, trip packages and so on. And in order to gamify this, they had to put points, they had to allow progress, they had to uh, uh, allow people to earn powers. So what they did was they invented a point called airline miles. And now every major airline provides these types of points, airline miles, to folks who buy uh, plane tickets or spend a certain amount of money on uh, different packages or upgrades in the seats and so on. Earning enough airline miles will allow you to reach different tiers with the company. You can have maybe a bronze membership, a silver membership, a gold or a platinum level membership. And at those different levels of membership, that's progress. You then gain more power to have bigger rewards, more choice in your um purchasing with the company. So you might be able to get the power to have a first class seat, whereas otherwise you would not be able to do so. Or you might get a discounted trip um, to America or to Malaysia for a much cheaper price, uh, spending your airline miles. So that's an example of gamification in our adult world. And now let's hear some other examples of gamification. Um, Okay, we see Shopee games, 
Hangman, Mobile Legends, Farm Frenzy. Now, these are actual games. A lot of these are actual games. Candy Crush, yes, PUBG, Animal Crossing, Farmville, all great examples of games themselves. But a game itself is already a game. It doesn't need to be made game-like. And so we don't need to gamify games because they are already games. But we want to gamify something like um, purchasing products, interacting with a, um, a company's website, um, being more engaged with or more loyal to a company's product or a certain type of store. Um, and that would then, if they give you points for doing anything with them, then you're, then you're, you're part of a, or they're providing a gamified system. Uh, yes, subtle apps, loyalty program to redeem and buy fuel. Perfect. Yes, that's a great example. And an old pre-digital type of example. I'm going to hold up here in the camera and let's see if it'll focus in. Can you see that? So this is an old loyalty punch card from McDonald's. And this is an old example of gamification where whenever you would come and buy a drink at McDonald's, you would get another punch in the card. And then when you filled up the card with all the punches, you could redeem the card for a free drink. And then as some folks are mentioning, loyalty programs with apps where you go and you buy petrol, gasoline, fuel, whatever you like to call it in your country, and you can scan the app, and then you get points, and then you can earn discounts on your fuel later. Um, or uh, you have different, like this is a moviegoer club card for theaters near me. And if I present this card when I go to the movies, uh, to see a movie, then they will scan the card and I earn points, which then get me progress towards a power of being able to have free popcorn or uh, something or like a free movie ticket in the future. Yes, there we go. Grab it. Grabbing food panda rewards. Malaysian Airlines. Yes, there you go. This is these are great. OK, you've got it. This is great. MasterCard, yes. So all credit cards, almost every credit card is going to give you, for me, I earn cashback rewards points. So they're going to have their name for the points. Earning the points gets you progress, which then unlocks powers, which are just the ability to make more choices um, than you were able to make before. All right. This is awesome. Great job, everybody. Okay, so now that we've connected on gamification examples outside of the world of education, let's jump right into, I'm going to throw you right in the middle of a gamified classroom. And um, you're going to need to be ready to play a little bit, maybe be ready for a little bit of fun. And especially, we're going to need to equip our imaginations. So if you will, imagine with me that this student on the screen, this student's name is Luca. And Luca is, uh, is your teacher and Luca is one of your students. And now we're going to put together a lesson plan, a lesson plan to teach Luca and our other students how to get creative and write a story. And so what do we need to do? Okay, so as teachers, the first thing we need to do is we're going to think through how do we tell students to write stories. So what we're going to need, we're going to have to tell Luca how to think of characters, what a story plot is, um, how to write ideas for your story plot, and then we're going to go find good resources to share these things with Luca. So we're, maybe we go online and we find a few cute YouTube videos that will show Luca these ideas. And then we find some handouts to provide to our kids. So a plot pyramid worksheet and some story map uh, graphic organizers. Okay, now we have our resources gathered. There's just one more challenge to solve. Luca 
isn't as excited about filling out plot pyramids as we are. Hmm. This is where gamification comes to the rescue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you an example of a gamified lesson in an English language arts classroom where we're teaching students to write their own stories. And uh, let's imagine that this is a class of students around Luca's age. And so they may be, they may be uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, anywhere in that age. However, um, that's just because the lesson, that example that I'm going to use is appropriate for students of that age, but you could use gamification at any level of education. So keep in mind, I'm just providing one example to help you uh, connect with gamification. And this lesson would typically fall into a 45 to 50 minute long class period. Um, and, but I'm going to I'm going to condense it for you to save you the um, the pain of sitting through an entire 45 or 50 minute long lesson. We're not actually going to do that. We're going to fast forward many bits of it. Um, and so we should be through it in about five minutes. And now. Um, we also need to imagine that I am a teacher and I am in a classroom, not my office here, and that you can be imagined if you'd like to be one of the students in the classroom or you can be an invisible visitor just watching everything unfold. And then what I'm showing on the screen here, this will be what is being projected onto a screen at the front of the classroom for all students to see. And with that in mind, we're ready to go. Okay, so away we go. All right, so let's imagine that the, the, the bell for being uh, on time to class has just rung and I was standing at the door, uh, inviting students in, welcoming them, saying hello to them for the day. And now we're all in the classroom and here we go. Welcome students, so glad to have you here today. Thanks for coming to class. Okay, go ahead and have a seat in your desks and let's take attendance. So here are here's everybody, so let's go ahead and see Who's here looking around the room? Okay, there's Julio, there's Luca, okay, Rory, Ernest, and then we go down and we do attendance. And maybe out of everyone in our class, maybe we're just missing uh, Gemma and Harold. So Gemma and Harold are absent. And okay, so now what I want to do is I want to say thank you for being on time to class, everyone. So we're gonna go ahead and everyone that showed up to class on time, I'm gonna give you points for arriving on time. And all right, so there you go. So now, now what do we do every day? What do we do every day, everyone, at the beginning of class? We need to be what? Ready to learn, right. So how do we be ready to learn today? We are going to need something to write with. Something to write with. Okay, hold up, hold up what you brought to write with today. Hold up what you brought. And then while they're digging through their backpacks or they're just holding it up, then I am going to go ahead and I am going to um, start selecting students. So I'll say, oh, all right, I see you. All right, I see you, Julio, good job. Luca, Luca, okay, good job. Rory is digging through Rory's backpack. Okay, we'll wait for Rory. Ernest, yep, good job. Jared, yep, all right, Melody, and so on. And we go through and we see who's holding up their pen or pencil. And then, and then at the end, Raina, yeah, oh, good job, Raina. And then Rory, Rory, did you find one? And Rory's feverishly digging through his backpack. Oh, oh it, it, Mr. Raj, I have this. And it's, a you know, the pencil is broken in half, but, you know, he'll be able to barely write with it today. At least, at least Rory was motivated to dig through his backpack instead of before Rory would just kind of be like, I don't have anything. And then, you know, we'd have to dig through our desk and find something to give Rory to write with that day. Okay, great. So let's give everybody points for what were we doing? We are being prepared and ready to learn. Great. All right. Now, let's get to the learning. Now, what were we doing yesterday, everyone? Well, let's take a look at our quest. 
here's our quest. And we were learning about writing stories. And so we brainstormed, we learned how to brainstorm ideas for our stories. And then we moved on to learning about plot. And remember, we watched this little video to help us understand what plot is. And then yesterday's task was to practice plot. And so what we did was we had our plot diagrams, right? Remember? Oh, good. Okay. And we filled out our plot diagrams. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to see who really paid attention yesterday. And we're going to review what we learned. So we're going to play a boss battle. Oh, yeah. And get ready. Get your remembering caps on because here it comes. We're going to play this boss battle against a jeweled gold crusher today. And the jeweled gold crusher is going to be asking us questions about what we learned yesterday. And hopefully we can defeat the jeweled gold crusher by answering them correctly and get a treasure from him. Okay, so what is the term for all of the events that take place in a story? And then you know, you teachers, you know what we do, right? We give the students three to five seconds of wait time. We internally count that. And then we'll randomly choose a student to show up here to answer the question. Boop, Gabriel. Gabriel, what do you say? And then you can let Gabriel, the students play in our class, they're on teams. So you could let Gabriel phone a friend, you could let Gabriel's team tell Gabriel, but we have to hear the answer come from Gabriel because that's my rule in my class, because I, Gabriel, got picked. And Gabriel, what do you say? What do you say, Gabriel? Oh, plot, are you sure? Hmm, let's see. Yes, it is the plot. Very good, Gabriel. Way to go. All right. So correct answer then is going to take two of these hearts away from the jeweled gold crusher. And now this is one of those moments, folks, where I'm going to fast forward forward. So we're going to, we kind of, I think you get the idea of the game here. We will review what we learned yesterday. What did we create to chart everything that will happen in our story? And then Neil will answer this question. And hopefully Neil says, a plot pyramid. And then we keep on answering questions. Hopefully we get enough of them correct that we can defeat the jeweled gold crusher and earn our treasure from him. Yay! Good job, everybody. Now, no problem. The wonderful thing about gamification is if we lose that, then it's all for one and one for all here. This is a collaborative experience where we're building relationships um, and we feel like we're part of something bigger than ourselves in this class. So if we lost that boss battle, then it, we would just try again tomorrow and we would learn tenacity and we would learn persistence and then eventually we would win and we would get our treasure. Now, the game just automatically gave the students all of these points. I don't have to do any of that. And let's move on with our lesson to learn our new stuff today. Oh, what are we going to discover today? Well, the next part of our quest is going to take us from introducing plot to your plot, students. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to watch this little video about story writing with a little tutorial on how to write a story. And we can play that right here. And then after we watch that, let's look at our task for the day. Okay, now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually fill in the rising action events, the falling action events, and the the exposition with the setting place and time in our plot diagrams. So that is our task today, everyone. So let's see if we can complete this assignment and if we can earn some points for doing it. When you get it done, you can turn it in on Classcraft right here. Now, in order to get started, I am going to need a helper today. You know Ms. Raj likes to have his helper of the day. So we're going to use a random picker. And let's choose our helper. Who's it going to be? Melody. Will you be my helper today? 
Oh, great question. Well, here's what I will need you to do, Melody. I will need you to hand out all of our plot diagram handouts that we just saw in the quest. So everyone has one. Do you mind to do that for me? And then maybe at the end of class, you can collect them for me too. Great. Thank you. Well, I'm going to give you points for being my helper today. So here you are, the helper of the day. And here you go, Melody. Go ahead and hand those out. All right. Thanks a lot, Melody. Great. Okay, so now we're going to go into a focused writing time, everyone. We've got to be able to have some nice, quiet moment to ourselves to process our plot diagram and really get creative on our stories. So in order to keep the classroom nice and quiet so we can all be focused. I'm going to use the volume meter right now. And we're going to get 100 experience points and let's do 25 gold pieces and let's work for let's work for 10 minutes. Let's see what kind of magic you can write in 10 minutes. And Now I'm going to set the volume. Now, in my class, the kids would already know. Audience, I'm breaking uh, tier to talk to you. In my class, the kids would already know how this works. But the way that this is working is, uh, the first time you use it, Classcraft will ask you if it can use the microphone that's built into your device, whatever device you're using. And, um, and then it will give you this little moving thing whenever it hears noise in the room. And we can set a max volume level here, and then we can go ahead and get started. Okay, now we have our time going, and we're getting down, and we are working on our work for the day. Now, what happens if we get too loud? Just for funsies, let's see what happens. Oh, if we got too loud, so then we can say, oh, that was a false alarm, everyone. That was me still giving directions. Sorry, everyone. Or we can say, yes, we were too loud, but let's keep going. And then what happens is our treasury reward is cut from 100 XP to 50 XP. And so is our gold pieces. They're cut in half as well. Now, this provides a real consequence for breaking the rules of the game that we're playing right now, which is basically a version of the quiet game where you see how quiet you can be. But there's still second, third, fourth, fifth chances built in because there is still a reward to be earned. So there's real consequence, but there's also still reward and a reason to keep going forward and to keep on working. Now, another thing that I want to do while my students are working on this, I am now freed up to walk around the room and I can use Classcraft on my cellular phone. So I will walk around the room with Classcraft on my phone and it will look like this on my phone. I can have the volume meter still going here and I can have my students here and I am going to encourage them while they're working. So walk around quietly while they're working and I will just make note on my phone by just tapping on their faces on my phone. Yes, Julio, I really like the way that you are being so attentive and taking so much care to write out the setting of your story right there. That's great. And Luca, yeah, great job. You're okay. So you're kind of working backwards with the story. You're thinking of how you want it to end. That's really cool. And so on. You go around to each of your students, you look at what they're doing. You're free to kind of walk around. But this is amazing classroom management right now because you are, it's very positive. You're building relationship and rapport that's positive with your students and they're motivated and they're continuing to be motivated to continue to stay focused because there's a visibility on what's expected of them in every moment with the volume meter. And then there's also encouragement coming from the teachers seeing, I see what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing. And I'm giving you points for that, which are basically a digital high five. You're saying, good job. I love that you are trying so hard. And so um, as I go around and I'm just selecting the students who are working hard during this time, 
Um, let's go ahead and imagine that the timer has finished and I'm going to say, okay, everyone, great job. So I'm going to give everyone points that was working hard, uh, points for being positive and hardworking during that time. And also, oh, that was a false alarm. That was me. Also, when the timer finishes, then Classcraft will automatically give all of the students these points. And so we can finish that piece. And now what I'd like to do to, with my students is let's get together into our Classcraft teams and let's share what we put down for our stories. So let's Oh, what are our, what are our teams? Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so if you forgot who which team you're on, here are our teams, everybody. So the Eager Eagles are Julio, Luca, Jared, Melody, the Responsible Rhinoceroses, and the Terrific Tigers, and the Triumphant Turtles. So here are your teams. Go ahead and get together at the tables over here, and let's let's get and let's go ahead and we need you there as fast as you can get there. So ready? Let's see how fast you can get to your teams. Ready, set, go! And then if you time if you time kids doing things, it's amazing and magical. Don't run into each other. Move quickly without running. All right, and then good job, everybody. So now let's work on our teams for. Let's do let's do another 10 minutes to share what we what we wrote about ready set and go. And if I see some really great teamwork, I may just give the whole team points. So, let me see some awesome collaboration and I want to hear I want it to be noisy, I want there to be talking, I want you all to choose who's going to speak and when and um, the timer is still going up here so they can see that and I can give out points to an entire team just by clicking there and giving that whole team points for working well with others and so on. Okay, so um, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that is um, a gamified lesson plan where we're taking some really um, ba kind of a basic lesson plan. Really, all I had to teach my students was this plot diagram. And normally I would just hand this out in class and say, okay, everyone, today we're going to learn about plot and we're gonna fill out, uh, we're gonna learn these vocabulary words, exposition, conflict, climax, falling action, rising action, resolution. And then tomorrow we're going to fill in these action events for your own story. And, you know, you, you can do that. That's that's basically the lesson plan. But which kind of class would you rather be in? Would you rather be in the class that's just going to hand out the worksheet to fill out? Or would you rather be in the class that has all of this active learning going on and a little bit more motivating, a little bit more engaging because you know that what you're doing is being seen by the teacher and encouraged by the teacher. And you know when you're doing the right thing because the teacher will give you points for doing that right thing while you're doing it. Um, okay, now let me take a quick look at our comments and see and just check in. Oh, great, okay. And just, just to clarify, when I was doing this lesson, this was all being done in a physical classroom. Um, remember the imagination that we were talking about in the beginning before we began is that what I'm showing on the screen here would be projected onto a screen at the front of the classroom if you can do so, if you have the technology to show what's on your computer screen in front of the class for students to see. Um, and then also notice none of the students needed to have a computer or an electronic device for this lesson at all. None of this, it was all done. I can run everything here as the teacher. Now, if you happen to have a situation where your students do have access to technology and they can access this, uh, they can access Classcraft in on their end, then um, it's even more fun but you don't have to have that going on. Um, 
and you don't even have to have like this is just an example of how I used this in my classroom and I had a projector in my classroom, but you don't even have to be projecting this onto the screen. If you don't have a projector, it works the exact same. It works just fine. And it's no download. There's no uh, game to download to your computer. It all runs right here on the internet. So all you need as a teacher is you just need a device that can connect to the internet to run it. And that being said, even if you don't have access to an electronic device during the school day as a teacher, you if as long as you can access an electronic device at some point during the school week, you can still access Classcraft later and give students points. And we have printable resources that um, would have a place for you, like a, a sheet where you can just check off that students earned points throughout the week in a grid. So you could just put that on a clipboard and walk around the room and give students points and then put them into Classcraft whenever you can access a device later. All right, so let's unpack this a little bit. Let's go into, let's go ahead and finish our timer here and give our kiddos some points for working so well together. And then uh, it's wonderful at the end of class as well to give students points to acknowledge how they perform the in, throughout the entire lesson. But let's go into let's go into a little bit of unpacking of what I just threw you into the middle of. And I just threw you in. I just threw a lot of things at you. And so um, I want to spend a little bit of time with you to make sense of all that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do for the rest of our time. We're going to unpack this lesson. We're going to look at how does Classcraft work. I was using Classcraft that entire lesson. Um, and uh, you also saw a few things that I put into Classcraft, like a YouTube video links and extra handouts. Those were not made by Classcraft. Those were just resources that I would have used as a teacher if I didn't even have Classcraft. But the beautiful thing is Classcraft plays so nicely with any of your teaching resources that you can just put them right in and it allows you to give kids points for doing what you've already planned to do. And that's what I loved about it as a teacher is that it did not dictate to me how to teach my classes. It just gave me a toolkit to make my classes more engaging and fun for my kids. And it gave me lots of ways to give them points for whatever I already had in my lesson plan. And I could use the features in Classcraft or I could ignore them. I could just use what I wanted to from what was available in the platform. And then for those of us who want to see, okay, there is some really cool data that comes out of using a digital system like this. So Classcraft will remember when you give students points for these positive behaviors, when I give students points for showing up on time and for having their materials ready for class and for um, they earned points for successfully being quiet during the volume meter, all of that is remembered for me by the platform. And now I can produce reports for each of my students or all of my students to see how they are practicing these positive behaviors on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. And that is so powerful and beautiful. And I'm so excited to show that to you. Um, and then we can look at how could you, how could you gamify education at an entire school-wide level? So not just in the classroom like we just saw, but how does this look and how does this work? if you want to bring gamification to your entire school community. All right, so let's start unpacking that lesson though. Let's start in the classroom. So I have more questions for you. This is question time for you. Uh, My question for you is what were, help me unpack, put in the comment section here in YouTube, what were some of the, what were some of the behaviors that our students had to show in class in order to earn points from the teacher. Let's see if you can find, if you can remember them all. So 
go ahead and start putting that into the comment section. What were the behaviors that students exhibited to earn points during this lesson? And there are more than three, but let's just see if we can collectively collect three. Okay, so some answers coming in are for keeping quiet. Yes, with the volume meter. The volume meter helped to earn them points through that. Being punctuality. I love that word. Yes, for being punctual to class, being on time. Um, connection. Yes, for and uh, <laughs> for focus. Yes, they earned points for showing focus, for working hard during the time where they had to be writing their story. Uh, yes, working as a team, working well together. Yes, very good. Doing a worksheet. I love that we have, okay, I love that we got that one. Um, so I did not actually give the students points for doing that worksheet. However, I did give them points for working on the worksheet. So in my mind, I'm giving them class craft points or I'm gamifying my class more based on participation, engagement, and effort rather than their actual performance on the assignments. So my, my points in Classcraft are not connected to students' grades. And that's very important because um, that Classcraft points are not punitive. They don't punish students um, for not knowing something. In fact, it's expected that when you come to class, you don't know things. We all came to this webinar not being professional gamifiers. But not, not No one put a three that they're a, a pro on gamification. And that is fine. That's perfect because that's why we come to learn. So when we create a, an environment of it's okay not to know things, and it's okay as long as you are trying. As long as you are giving me an honest answer, then I'm going to give you points for trying and honestly trying that. Now, I can't always give you an A or a B or a C. I can't always give you grades for not knowing things because that's not the way that the grading system is set up. But with this gamified system in Classcraft, I as the teacher now have a system in my toolkit to encourage effort and to encourage engagement. And that's a beautiful thing. It breaks down an environment of fear in your learning environment. Now students are not necessarily afraid to get something wrong and they're not afraid to fail as long as they can fail forward, as long as they can fail and then try again. And that's what games allow us to do is games allow us to make a mistake and then to learn from that and come back to that same part of the game and try it over. Um, and that's really kind of a lot of the ways that real life works as well. And so um, it works really nicely to, to keep students engaged and motivated in class. All right. And now um, let's let's continue unpacking. So thank you so much for your for your answers. Those are great. I love it. Thank you so much for being such an interactive group. This is so fun. OK, let's take a look at a, uh, a more unpacking. So, you know, we mentioned gamification, the three P's of gamification. Can you remember if you want to gamify something, you throw them in the comments for those of us who may have forgotten by now. You need to bring something and then make something and then earn something. And each of those words start with the letter P. So put that in the comments if you can remember the three P's of gamification because it's important because that's going to be how we unpack the next piece. So to gamify our class, we need to bring those points 
which you just told me what students were earning points for. And you as a teacher, you can decide what your classroom expectations are and then let students earn points for those things. You can completely customize your class craft classes and put in whatever things that you want students to earn points for. You can just type in whatever your expectations are and you will now be able to click on them in Classcraft. So, um, so students can earn points that way and then they'll make progress and they will unlock, they will unlock powers in your class. So we'll unpack that in a moment. But before we do so, let's look at other ways that students were earning powers during class. So as opposed to just clicking on the student and then giving them points manually with a click for a specific behavior, there were other things that I used during the lesson. Can you name some of those things that we used during the lesson? Some things other than just clicking and giving students points for a behavior. What were some other things that I used to bring gamification to other aspects of that lesson? I love it. I see that you are you are getting it. This is great, everyone. Way to go, team. We're doing it. This is wonderful. Yes, this question is harder. <laughs> yes, and my wonderful compatriot, Madeline, has given a hint. One of the answers that we're looking for is the volume meter, where I was able to show students, okay, this is as loud as we can get for the next 10 minutes. Yes, very good. The timer, we did time students. We gave them a stopwatch timer to see how fast they could get into their groups. And then we also used a countdown timer to time their group activity for them to share their stories with each other. So great. Yes, oh, you got the boss battles. Way to go team. So we reviewed the previous day's lesson with a boss battle, which is just a collaborative review game that's built right into Classcraft. And a boss monster asks questions of randomly selected students, or you can have the, the platform randomly select their teams so they can all answer as a team if you'd like. And that is a wonderful way to review before a quiz, before a test, or just to review like I did we just wanted to review what we did the day before so we could build on that in today's lesson. Oh, I love this. Okay, now this, these answers are great. Map trail and map progress. These answers are amazing. Great job for those answers. So what is that map? Well, in Classcraft, we call that a quest. And what I'd like to do is I do want to go back. I do want to go back to that quest. And I do want to unpack that with you. So here is, here is what you're talking about, this map progress. And this was one of my favorite features. Now, this is an advanced uh, gamification feature where you can take your existing lesson plans and you can put them into, um, you can just type them right in here. You can give the students what we call an anticipatory set. We use that term uh, to describe uh, in education. It's not a gamification term. An anticipatory set creates anticipation or excitement for the lesson or what we're going to be learning that day. And so that can go into your story section when students first open a spot on the map and then they can have a task to complete that day 
And then you can also uh, put give them a place to turn in their assignments on here as well. And this can unlock new places in the story for them as they move along. There's a lot more to this lesson plan. This is actually a lesson plan that would stretch out about two weeks. But um, the student, and I'm actually looking at the quest as a student right now, and the student can see where they've been and what they've already done and what they've already learned. Again, if they have a device, but they don't have to um, have a device because as a teacher, I was showing this on the screen. And you can put in all kinds of resources. So this is just a YouTube video. Um, and so is so is this. These were not created by Classcraft. These were just found by me as the teacher to put in to my quest as part of my lesson plan. The thing that I loved about this as a teacher was that I could be very well organized with my various materials. I have all these different resources that I found to teach my students about story and I can put them in a nice order and collect them together here in a quest and they're all in one place. The beautiful thing about this is, is that if your students can access this at home on devices, if they have a, if they have a, uh, a lot of students may actually have, oh, I don't, I'm not, one, I'm not really sure about in Malaysia, but I know in America, you might have a lot of students who have a smartphone, but they don't have a laptop or anything at home. And uh, But they can access these quests on their smartphones and they can... Um, and they can engage with it. And my students loved it. I used Classcraft with my students for four years before coming to work with Classcraft. And this actually, this motivated my students to do homework and turn in assignments to the level where many of my students would actually ask me, Mr. Hutch, can I have more assignments? Can you put more things in the quest so that I can earn more points? <laughs> <laughs> and that that uh, honestly blew my mind. Um, that was very surprising to me as a teacher. Um, so that is what we also used um, to show our lesson. Um, now, again, like I said before, you don't have to use all of these things as a teacher. They're here if you want to use them. But if all you do to gamify your classroom is find a way to give points so that students can, can sense their progress and then they can earn powers or rewards, then you are gamifying your class. And so I've just shown you many different avenues for giving students points. You can give them points for behavior like you see here. Um, uh, Rory, I just liked how you showed respect for us here in class today. Or you can use your class tools to manage your classroom while you're running class. We've got the boss battles, the volume meter, the random picker, and plenty of other fun things here. Or if you want to just gamify your lesson plans, you can do so with quests. And you can build out lesson plans as a teacher. Um, and... Then here is, this is the teacher view of the lesson. You can see the whole lesson all at once on this beautifully rendered map. And the students only unlock the pieces as they move forward along these arrows. And they unlock it in the order that you want them to see things. And uh, you can edit them as you go and so on. So that is essentially all the kind of components that I used during that lesson. So I feel like it's pretty well unpacked now. And now what I'd like to do is give you a brief moment of rest from having to listen to my voice. And let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy a quick two-minute video to help us really get our minds around uh, what Classcraft is and how it works, because there are a few pieces to it that you have not seen yet. So sit back, relax, and please enjoy this short video. Here's the reality. Students are struggling in the classroom, and it's hard to keep them motivated. The pandemic has put even more pressure on mental health in schools for everyone. 
Educators already facing burnout are expected to develop the social-emotional skills of their students while providing extra support for those with behavior challenges. Luckily, Classcraft's evidence-based and modern approach to positive behavior engages students using the motivational principles of games to develop valuable learning skills. Teachers get the support they need with the best behavior management tools to quickly set up clear expectations and reward positive behavior. Simple to learn, easy to use, and incredibly powerful, Classcraft dramatically decreases classroom management workload to devote more time to what really matters being there for the students and for themselves. Students immediately feel motivated and engaged with opportunities to collaborate on teams, develop beautiful avatars they relate to, all while sharing and getting feedback from their peers and teachers. Fun just made its comeback in the classroom. With access to early intervention data, teachers can track and manage how each student is progressing in their classrooms, while administrators can see how students are really doing school-wide and identify those who need the most support. Classcraft plays well with the services you already use, like Clever, Classlink, Canvas, and Google Classroom, all easy to set up and usable in any context, even remote. Created by a teacher for teachers, Classcraft's human-centered technology empowers educators to build community, decrease referrals, and motivate students no matter where they are. See how we use the motivational principles of games to inspire students to socially and academically grow. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for tips and best practices in motivating students and implementing effective behavior intervention. For a look inside the Classcraft experience, Check out our YouTube or Vimeo channels. Okay, thank you for watching that. So um, you might have seen a few things in that video that I haven't mentioned yet about Classcraft. In fact, I've mentioned how to give students points, and I've talked a lot about that. But we haven't seen directly progress and the powers piece. So let's look at that a little bit together because this, this system is intrinsically motivating to students. And by intrinsic motivation, I mean internal or motivation where you are, you are motivated to engage in a behavior or to engage at school or to engage in class from within instead of being motivated by something like an external or outside reward um, like candy or an external or outside punishment like receiving a detention or what we call referrals over here in America, which are uh, basically like pieces of paper that tell you you've done a bad thing and you can't get too many of them or else you'll have to be suspended and you have to be out of school for a little while. Um, and so instead of using external motivators like that, we can now take the power of gamification and we can create internal motivation that is lasting, that lasts beyond uh, just being in our class. So students will continue to feel good about showing up on time to their jobs and being prepared for work and completing things on time at in their professional life as adults and being responsible for raising their children and for uh, loving and, and engaging in relationships and working well with others. Because what this does is it helps you to feel um, fulfilled by doing these things in class. And why does it do that? Well, let's take a quick look. So our, our mentality here is that we're imagining what if succeeding at school can feel like play. And that's where we bring in gamification, because if you want to define games, you really have to think about what is a game. A game is just play with rules. And games can be sports. Games can be um, board games, tabletop games like chess and checkers, or games can be video games. But all of those games are play with rules. Now, at school, we already have plenty of rules. 
So all we have to do is bring in a playful atmosphere and a playful environment. And it's very easy to do when you use a digital platform like Classcraft because now you have a way to show students how to earn points and you can put in whatever reasons you want to here. Just think about your classroom expectations and put them right into Classcraft. And as they earn points, they make progress. They have, they each have an account and they fill this experience points bar over several days as you continue to give them points for things they do. When they fill up that experience points bar, one of the rewards they receive is a crystal. So you see these little blue crystals. And every time Malika fills her experience points bar in this animation, you see another crystal appear, another crystal appear, another crystal appear. She also levels up, so she starts at level four, and now she's, by the end, she's a level seven learner at your know, class or at your school. Now, what do those crystals do? Well, that fulfills the powers piece. So now students will spend a crystal to activate a power. And in every Classcraft class, there are at least three different powers that the teacher chooses and then the students can choose from those three powers whenever they want to spend a crystal to activate a real life reward. And this allows the students the um, ability to have some more choice and a little bit more control in their school day. And that is very, very motivating. That actually fulfills our emotional need for autonomy or feeling of a, a sense of having the ability to have freedom, choice, and control over some aspects of your life. Um, and so if you can provide that to students within the safe boundaries of your social norms at school, then they're going to be very motivated to earn these powers. And if the students aren't as motivated about being able to activate powers, then they may be more active, motivated to be able to control an avatar and what their avatar looks like or a character. So an avatar is a digital character that students will be able to customize and they will be able to upgrade and, and unlock different looks for their character as they level up by earning points. And leveling up fulfills our emotional need for competency. It actually helps students to connect with the fact that they are growing day by day, not just physically growing, but they are growing in your class academically. They're learning course content. They're learning social skills. They are developing as a human being in wonderful ways. And as you're giving them points for exhibiting those positive behaviors and developing in that positive way, then they are able to connect with that growth because they can see their character leveling up and looking cooler and cooler over the weeks and months and by the end of the school year. The whole platform is set up to celebrate successes, to celebrate engagement. Um, it's very collaborative. You can see just in the example of the boss battles, it was all for one, one for all, not the teacher versus the students. It was the teacher with the students against the boss monster, and we all win or we all lose together. We found that in games, there are two major motivators. There's competition and collaboration, and those are major social motivators in games. However, when you bring gamification into the education realm, competition ends up being detrimental to at least 50% of your student population. Because if you establish what's called a leaderboard where students can see who's doing better than them, then that competition piece um, starts to, it'll motivate some students to try to move up the leaderboard, but half of your students are always gonna have to be making up the bottom half of that leaderboard. And that makes them feel like they're not very good at this game. And what is this game? This game is school. This game is not Classcraft. Classcraft is helping you turn school and success at school into a game. So you don't want your students to feel like they are not, quote unquote, good at this or not good enough. Um, and so we want to create, we want to use the social motivating power of collaboration in the education environment. 
Um, and the rewards impact real life. We are gamifying real life. We are not playing a video game. We are not needing to distract from class. We are doing what you saw me doing in class. We are enhancing real life to make real life at school gamified. And it's very easy to get started as a teacher. You do not have to be a gamer. You do not have to be able to write, I'm a pro at gamification before you try to use Classcraft. Because Classcraft allows you to level up too. It allows for you to begin gamification at whatever level of comfort you have in the moment, and then to develop over time at your own pace and at your own comfort. And so what does that look like? I'm going to show you that to you very quickly. Here's my class craft again. Let's go to my teacher home. Here are my, here's my teacher home and here's my different classes that I've made in class craft. Now, when you create a new class in class craft, you will have this screen. It's called your class progression. And it will lead you through getting set up in the introduction called Your Journey Awaits. We love the power of narrative in Classcraft and the power of story. So we play around with that a little bit here. But you'll see these different screens telling you about points, progress, and powers. And you can try it on a fake demonstration student, just giving them points just to see what it looks like. And then you can look at Okay, what kinds of positive behaviors do I want to give points for in my class? Then you can add students to the class. And then we have built in um, support videos so that you can watch. Various for in this journey with you. So we want to partner in this learning journey with you. And we want to provide you with the ability to learn at your own pace. And you essentially have professional development on demand built right into the platform. And when you're ready to start, then you can go ahead and start. And what we use are chapters of implementation. So when you begin, your class will just be a what we call a chapter one class, meaning that you have gamified your class with the most basic features available in Classcraft. You now have a way to give students points. They can earn progress and they can uh, earn powers. But just a very few, very simple class tools, the stopwatch, the timer, the volume meter, and the random student picker are all that are in your class at first. And then when you feel like, okay, I'm ready for more then you can come to here and you can watch this video to let you know, oh, if I want to upgrade my class to a chapter two class, then what will that look like? And there's no cost or anything to upgrade your class to a chapter two class. You don't have to pay anything. It's just you are progressing your level of gamification. How many features do you want to have in your class and what are you comfortable with using? And, um, when you get all the way up to chapter four, you'll be using some of the features that you saw me using with you today. The, the boss battles are here, uh, way up here in the last chapter of uh, gamification with Classcraft. So that's how it works. And then real quick for any of us who are school leaders, or if you're interested in applying this gamification to your school culture, then you're going to be able to create an amazing transformative powerful type of school culture, um, bringing this into a school-wide or a district-wide type of implementation. And here's why. When you bring this in at a school-wide level, we work with you, with your school leadership team, and we will customize your school-wide settings so that on a school-wide level, you can set goals for your student body, for behaviors you would like to see your student body to exhibit. Uh, so you want your students to become more respectful or more responsible or or practice better safety or cleanliness or be more engaged in class. You can set goals in the platform and then we you can have specific behaviors tied to those goals. So a goal of developing self-management skills here 
is connected to showing self-control. And when teachers and teachers will automatically then have all of these behaviors placed right into their classes for them, you'll be able to help them skip all of the setup and they will be ready to send a clear and consistent message to your students across the entire school of which behaviors to practice in their lives to be successful learners at your school community. The beautiful thing about every teacher having the same set of behaviors to look for and to give points for to students is that your students now is very clear to them about what's expected of them when they're at school and how they can be successful um, at school. Um, and there's all kinds of extra fun that can happen when you go school wide. So we have what's called a collective feedback feature. Now, what that just allows you to do is that folks who are not teachers, but still see students, maybe in the hallways or maybe in the at lunch or before or after school, then those adults can still invest in the students by giving them points. So if an administrator like a principal or a school leader is walking down the hallway and they see a student stop and help another student who's dropped their books in the hallway, the administrator can stop them and say, and you can use this on your phone very easily. So it's easy to use on the go. And they can say, hey, what's your name? And the student's like, well, well, why? Um, I'm, I'm Fred. Well, Fred, I just caught you doing a wonderful thing and you were being very helpful to another classmate. You're getting points for helping others. And it's beautiful to catch students doing good. It's so cool. Um, you can have staff members, you can have a, a school custodian, maybe cleaning up after lunch and they see a student go over and clean up some trash that wasn't theirs and throw it away. That custodian can say, hey, I saw you doing that. You know what that was? That was respecting school property. I'm giving you points for respecting school property. And they can just do that right on their phone. Um, you can also allow students to spend their, their um, you could provide a little bit of fiscal responsibility and teach them um, how to manage uh, fiscal um, resources. Because whenever students earn points for doing good things in Classcraft, not only do they earn points that allow them to progress to level up, but they also get some points that are called gold pieces that you see here. And gold pieces are like class craft money. They're not real money. They don't cost students any real money, but this allows you to let them spend these gold pieces on real world things. So many schools will have a school store and they can uh, let students go to that school store now. And you can use whoever, whichever adult is using the, uh, is running the school store. They can use Classcraft like a cash register and they can allow students to spend their gold pieces to purchase treats or school supplies or whatever. And the beautiful thing about that is it's not real money. It's very equitable because it doesn't matter whether the student comes from a rich household or a relatively poor household or what their background is. They have equal opportunity to earn these points while they're at school. And so you'll see students wanting to come to school so that they have more opportunities to earn these gold pieces and spend them on real world things. And it's a beautiful thing. Now, I mentioned that I would talk about data and here it is as your teachers are giving students points for all these positive behaviors throughout the school day, Classcraft will collect it and provide you with wonderful reports on each of your students so you can see which specific behaviors and at what time of day they were practicing these behaviors. You'll be able to start noticing trends like maybe Alex here, maybe Alex is being positive and hardworking in the morning and all the teachers that he sees in the morning are able to give him points for being positive, hardworking. But then after lunch, something happens to Alex and Alex goes haywire and doesn't ever earn any positive points after lunch. And now you can have a very well informed support meeting for Alex, um, maybe bringing in Alex's parents and you can show this data. And it's very, um, 
it's very easy to support your students before they start to earn a lot of negative consequences at school, before things start to really get heavy and the students are earning all kinds of uh, disciplinary action and you're spending all this time um, filling out paperwork and things, you can catch it before it happens. And um, because this data is coming in in real time. And here's a, just a bigger graph so you can see it a little better. You can see that the, the the dates that uh, this this is for one particular student has been earning points from teachers. And then along the bottom, you can see, uh, for example, 70 times in this date range, this student received points from their teachers for remaining focused to complete daily classwork. 25 times the student was being a helper around the room and so on. So I love how specific the behavioral data is and um, it's just so incredibly, so incredibly helpful for supporting students. Um, this definitely does work. We're not just talking about something that's a theory. So we have uh, case studies and success success stories to share with you. And I'll just share two quick ones. Tabor, Middle, Tabor City Middle School um, used Classcraft school-wide. And um, in one year, they saw 91% fewer classroom disruptions and 85% fewer fights in the school. Um, and you can, um, um, you can see the other uh, wonderful things happening here. And um, what, they, what they said to us is a calculation of just one hour of teaching and administrator time for each saved referral translates to 27 staff days. So it's an insane amount of time that you were actually saving by being able to not only promote a more positive environment and that the students are enjoying more at school, but when you don't have to fill out those paper referrals and disciplinary action as much, you are more freed up to walk the halls and then and see what's happening at the school and go visit classrooms and things as a school leader. Um, and another case study we saw, um, this school particularly wanted to decrease that amount of time they spent managing student behavior and not just managing negative behavior, but they also had a system in place for encouraging students and managing positive behavior. And they were spending a lot of time on that system as well because it was all paper-based. When students were doing something good in class, teachers would give them a little paper token and then the students could use those tokens to uh, buy things at the school store or enter in um, raffles and things like that. Now, once they started using Classcraft and it was all digitized and kept the data for them, it cut their management time for all of that by 80%. Uh, we'd love to share more research. We have a whole website de dedicated to um, research that's been done on Classcraft, and it's worked in all kinds of environments. Just this one on the left here was done by, um, by UNC Charlotte here in America, and they found that 40%, 46% of the students, this is in a virtual learning environment, so not your traditional um, classroom like the other two uh, examples were, but an online learning environment. They were having a real struggle with having students participate in online forums or, um, you know, actually, actually like, you know, responding to each other in discussion threads and having interaction on their on in their class. And um, they found that once you started to gamify that system with Classcraft, 46 percent of your students um, were not participating beforehand. And then afterwards, less than three percent of your students were not participating. So 96, 97% of their students were engaging online in their discussion threads and actually participating with those classes. Thank you so much for um, listening to uh, and hanging out here with me for, for this presentation. Here's a couple examples of those customizable avatars that students can unlock. And now what we'd like to do is um, spend the next few moments together just kind of answering some of the questions that you have been posting in the comments along the way. And um, so what I'd like to do is take a look at what are some questions we can um that we want to answer so um let's see i believe my friend madeline has been pulling those from from the youtube comment thread here for me madeline do you have any um 
questions that we want to really make sure we get answered before our time is up tonight or this morning. Oh, and I might put Madeline on uh, on the spot here um, <laughs> because, uh, oh, we have four. Okay, we have four really good questions. All right, no problem. Oh, there's Madeline. Hi, Madeline. Oh, Sharmila. Hello, Sharmila. Welcome back. Sharmila, I can't hear you. Technology is a wonderful thing. Um, still, still nothing. Now? Oh yes, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You Absolutely know, technology no glitches do happen, though. Anyway, um, Hajj and Madeline, this is seriously, you know, this is so cool. We've been flooded with lots and lots of uh, commands in the live chat. Um. Yeah, we have four, you know, questions that, you know, possibly we could address within right. the period of five minutes before the session, the webinar ends. Um, yeah. And Madeline been doing great job in responding to most of the <laughs> comments and they were so interactive. Well, this is so good. This is so good. All right. So we have four questions. Let's see. Um, Okay, maybe I'll, I'll I'll just randomly pick one. Um, I'm seeing uh, I am seeing a question on the screen here. Is that one we want to answer or? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so um, this is a great question. How are we going to apply this method in F two F classes? And I'm making a bit of an assumption, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I am assuming that F two F means face to face. Face to face. Beautiful. Exactly. Beautiful. So, um, and and I'm I'm so happy you asked this question because. Um, and it, it makes like this format for what we're doing here when we're live streaming, it, it does make for some confusion that I want to clear up. When I was doing that gamified lesson example, that would be a lesson that I would teach in a face-to-face -face class. And I just can't, you know, demonstrate it the way I would like to with actual students in an actual classroom in this moment. But that is, I was pretending that entire time that uh, I would be in uh, a face-to-face -face classroom with my students. Now, a couple of tips and tricks, because I know that if I were watching this right now, I would be asking, okay, but here's the thing, you were sitting right in front of your computer that entire time, so it was very easy for you to be clicking on your computer and doing all of the things but if I'm in a classroom, you know, I'm not going to necessarily be sitting at my desk and just doing everything from behind a computer. That's not the way that I like to teach. And I would say the same thing. I was a science teacher and I, so I was always very, um, everything we did was hands-on and we were all doing activities and we were discovering things at lab tables and so on. And I did not like to have to be uh, tied to a desk. So, um, so some things that worked for me, um, in order to give students points while you're seeing them do things in class, you can use your, uh, if you have a mobile device, you can use that. Classcraft works wonderfully on that device. And I did that as a teacher, I would walk around with my device and I would say, Oh, caught you doing good things. Caught you doing good things. Points, points, points. And one thing that, that was really beautiful that came out of that actually was whenever I would just take my phone out, because I didn't just take my phone out all the time when I was teaching, but whenever I would take my phone out, my students would instinctively start to pay attention. They would, they would say, oh, 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 hey, 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 Mr. Hutch has his phone. Hey, Mr. Hutch. Hey, Mr. Hutch, look, I put the date on my paper. And I answered number two. Wow. <laughs> Over here, Mr. Hutch. And I, so they would start just say, oh, look, uh, hey, Mr. Hutch has got his phone out. Now let's all straighten up and we might get points. And so that was a really cool thing. So you can give points on the go. Another thing that okay. I did was if you don't want to have Classcraft 
open. You but you want to still be able to give points. You don't have that kind of a lesson plan for the day that's going to use a quest or a boss battle or any of that. Well, that's totally fine. Um, I used I would have students go up to the board and write your name on the board. And what we did is um, I had an artistic student uh, kind of artistically write at the top of the board some positive behaviors that we wanted to practice in our class. And they wrote them in nice font on this on the board. And then we just put columns down the board and used that part of the board for those behaviors. And then whenever I would see a student doing that, oh, hey, you were just helping them so nicely. Go put your name on the board right underneath helping others. And now they're putting their name on the board for good things. Um, and at the end of the day, I could just sit down and look at the board and then I could put in the points in class craft. So there are all kinds of different ways to do it. Um, if you uh, if you have a student helper, I, I used a, my students would yell at me every day if I did not pick our helper of the day with class craft. Um, <laughs> but Mr. Hot, you forgot to pick the helper of the day. Who's the helper of the day? Because they wanted to get the points for that. So um, okay. that my helper of the day would often come. And they All could right. sit at the computer and oh, give okay. points out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Wow. Wow. That that is very very insightful, Hutch. Um, we would love to take in more questions though, but it's already ten thirty. Hutch and Matt, it looks like we have to go for another episode <laughs> of having class. <laughs> Looking yeah. at you know the yes, Matt, Lee, you were saying something. No, I was going to say we definitely do. There are a few more questions that we can type up an answer. We can have some resources. Mm -hmm. We can exactly. make it easily available to share with you all, and this just shows up us as you just said we need to have another session maybe take a deeper yes. dive into the application of class craft in the classroom probably i strongly foresee that <laughs> so dear <laughs> ladies and gentlemen to the audience i think we might go for a next you know another webinar with again hatch and madeline <laughs> to address all the other uh, questions as well as to you know to dwell into the application session maybe perhaps um okay it's time to <laughs> wrap up <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you to the audience for being so interactive and to Madeline, you know, uh, for really managing the live chat and for Hutch for the, you know, it's just too good. <laughs> you just rocked the show. Thank you for sharing ample of knowledge with all of us and enlightening about Classcraft and what, you know, what good it does in the teaching of and learning of classroom. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost to the end of our webinar today. Um, just a bit of announcement um, if, when you have the time, right? Or if, if you want to know more about Classcraft, we do provide the short course in our improved website. So you're cordially invited to join the first uh, level of introduction to Classcraft micro course at uh, Open Learning. I'm sure the link uh, is shared in the live chat, you know, so feel free to go and enroll yourself into the uh, micro courses, or you can always go to ELTC website, go to our improved website, and you can see, you know, um, hundreds and hundreds of uh, courses, you know, being late for you to enroll yourself. And that brings to the end of our webinar today. So do not forget to join our next webinar. and. Um, Thanks to Hutch and Madeline once again, and to the entire team for the inspiring and interactive session. I had great fun. So hope <laughs> all of I'm sure you know Hutch and Madeline really really. had great fun. Yes, this was this was a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to our wonderful friends in education across the globe. Um, and we've really enjoyed the experience. Madeline had really the the toughest job in <laughs> so thank you so much Madeline. great job she had the really hard job today um indeed, but uh, indeed, yeah. thank you so much this was great fun we really enjoyed it thank you thank you thank you so much to both of you uh we have benefited ample from both of you till we meet again perhaps in our next <laughs> episode um uh, dear ladies and gentlemen Thank you so much for joining us today at this webinar. Looking forward to seeing you in our next ELTC's webinar. Stay tuned. Keep checking our Twitter and Instagram for more announcements and information. And once again, thank you to the Classcraft team, uh, Hutch and Madeline. Have a good day. Take care. 
Stay safe. Have a take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye Hajj. Bye. Yeah.